So good morning. The call of worship today is taken from Psalm 24, and it says, The earth is the Lord's, and all is fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob. The generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Selah. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. So God, we come before you today saying, Lord, you are strong and mighty. You are mighty in battle. We are honored and privileged to come into your presence another day, knowing, God, that's where you reside in our hearts. So today we come before you asking you, God, just to dwell in this sanctuary. Dwell on the, the virtual TV today, oh God. Dwell in the homes and the hearts of your people, oh God. Because you said, lift up the gates, oh you people. God, come into us today. Come into our hearts. Give us a pure heart, a clean heart, God, that we may always seek you. That you say, where we seek you, we will find you. And we draw closer to you, God, in this season. So today we are honored and privileged to just be thankful and grateful for who you are. Because, God, you are strong. God, you are the king of glory. You are God almighty. And we are so grateful and thankful that you reign in our lives. Holy Spirit, fall fresh in this place today. Fall fresh in our minds and in our hearts. Give us a heart to always follow after you. Give us a heart to always fall at your feet and offer up a sacrifice to you. Because God, you are God and there's no one greater than you. You are a great God. You are a good, good father. And we are so honored and blessed and say that we are your family. We are your children and we honor you today, God. So we just give everything over to you because you are so worthy to be praised. We lift up our hands just to give you a, a praise of thanksgiving for this season that we were in, oh God. We are so faithful, God, that you brought us through this season. Even though we might have had trials and tribulation, hills and mountains and valleys, but God, you sit high and you look low and you carried us through. You carried us through another year. And we just want to say thank you, God, because we know who holds tomorrow and our lives are in your hand we give you all the praise and glory in the matches name of jesus amen give thanks to the lord our god and king his love endures forever for he is good he's above all things his love
Jesus, you're all I Again, EBC, this is another part of the service we can all take in, take part in, and it's offering time. Um, we thank you again for your faithfulness in 2020. God has been so good to us. And so there's three ways to give. Our primary way to give is via e-transfer at giving at ebcmeet.com. We also have credit and debit through Canada Helps on our website ebcmeet.com or you can drop your offering off on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 9.30 and 12. Let's pray. So God, we come again before you just offering up this sacrifice, oh God, to give back to you. God, you 
have given us so much and we can even even give back you a portion of what you have already given us because you gave your only son you gave Jesus Christ but today God we come before you just asking you to bless this offering for the upkeep it the building of your house here on this earth oh God but we plant seeds of love today in good ground. We plant seeds of peace, God, in good ground. Asking you in this season, God, that you give the increase, God. Water it, pour on it, God, that we may, you may open up a window, God, and pour out blessings on your family. And we are so honored and grateful for what you have already done in our lives. Because, God, you are so faithful. You continue to pour your love on us each and every day. So I just ask a special blessing over this offering that you will use to people that um, are behind the scenes. Give them wisdom. Give them supernatural insight to um, manage your money. Have them be good stewards of your money here on earth that we will be able to fulfill what you called us to do, God. Sow into good ground and you will give the increase. God, we thank you again. We can't thank you enough for all the many blessings you have bestowed on us this season. In a season where many people might have experienced drought and disappointment, God, you continue to show your love. God, and that's what we need in this season. We need your love. So we just ask you to bless this offering in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. So I have before you um, some announcements just to let you know that church will be closed um, for the Christmas season starting Monday, December 21st, and will reopen Monday, January the 4th. Please contact Pastor Leonard the week of December 21st or Pastor Anderson the week of December 28th if an emergency rises during this time. And please note there will be no safe offering drop off during this time. And this is another part of the year that I get so excited about is Wash by the Word. I love this time of year. Um, Wash by the Word is to the 2021 Wash by the Summit will be held Friday, January 8th to Sunday, January 10th. And I'll tell you, you don't want to miss it. It's such a power pack weekend. We are so washed by so many great speakers, and it will be powerful time of worship, prayer, preaching, and teaching for our church family under the theme, Recalibrate. Intentionally shifting gears. We need to intentionally shift gears this season. This will also launch our 21-day corporate fast, and we um, plan to distribute digitally copies of the fasting and devotional guide. But if you require a printed version, please contact the church office. Whether we are gathering in person or online, this will be a pivotal, and I'm telling you, this will be a pivotal weekend. You don't want to miss it. And so it has come to our attention um, that some of our church members do not have an internet service provider. And we are considering a phone in option for those that cannot watch the YouTube service. And if you know of someone that you believe would use this option, please call the church with their name and we consider and we will consider additional options for those who cannot attend. And woohoo, we're back to church. We're back to church on January the 3rd. We are all looking forward to welcome you back to church. It's nothing like corporate church. And so we will be in person service on January 3rd. And the service is capped at 100 people. Hear me, it's capped at 100 people due to public health regulations. And the service link will be available through EBC Newsmail out for sign up on Sunday, December 27th. And I just want to say Happy New Year to everyone online. And I'm looking forward to, and everybody else is looking forward to seeing you January 3rd. Thank you.
walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Yeah, your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. I know the night won't last. Yeah. Your will will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Oh, Jesus, you're still enough. Oh, keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness, yeah. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed. Your promise still stands.
Amen. How many can say this morning, great has been his faithfulness. His promise has stood through our entire year. His faithfulness has stood throughout our entire year that we can look back and say, maybe there's been some walls that we've walked around and was waiting for them to fall, but we can look and see the faithfulness of God, that his hand has been in every single situation of this year, of our lives. And as this sermon is going to show us as well this morning, that he is headed with us into our new year as well. Thank you so much, worship team, for your faithfulness to this house. Church, as we enter into this sermon, this is our final Christmas presence. Post-Christmas presence is really what we're going to be talking about this morning. I want to just say a couple quick thank yous. When you start with thank yous, uh, that is difficult because you want to make sure you don't miss anybody. So I'm going to try to blanket everybody as quickly as I can. But I want to say a thank you to our church, to the leadership team, to you, the people, to every person that uh, I can call as a colleague or a friend, volunteers, church staff, for their faithfulness in this season. They have been great to work with, and God has done an amazing work in a year when we couldn't have imagined, when we came into 2020, we wouldn't have imagined that it would look like this. Maybe you're tired of, of hearing that. You say, I don't want it to look like this anymore. But I can promise you that God has done something in 2020 with this pandemic that he has not been able to achieve before in the church. That he's doing something new in this season. And he is changing us. He is transforming us. He is shaping us. And so thank you so much to our pastoral staff team, to Pastor Lennett, and everybody else uh, in this church you guys are family, and we appreciate you so, so much. I want to preach this morning from dirt to destiny. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 22 and going to verse 38. From dirt to destiny, a post-Christmas presence. A post-Christmas presence. Starting at verse 22, it says, Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to, to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the faces of all people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. Let me say that again. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, and the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you would uh, bless my words, anoint my lips. God, help me to speak forth your truth this morning. God, I ask right now that hearts would be readied for what you have to say from dirt to destiny. And God, that your presence would be with us in this sermon as it has been all through this season. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now I want to talk for a moment about someone that maybe you didn't think would make it into this sermon. Usain Bolt. You guys know Usain Bolt, the fastest man who has ever lived up to this point in time. Usain Bolt. 
very, very fast individual. And let me just say, as somebody who would say running is kind of boring, I could watch this man run for days. You watch this man run, you get inspired by his speed, Usain Bolt. Now retired, Usain Bolt has broken the records. He is a 200-meter champion. He is a 100-meter champion. He was born to run. You watch this man, it will impress you, Usain Bolt. Even his name. I had to look at it. I was like, Can, is his last name really Bolt? You know you're born for it when your name is Usain Bolt and you're the fastest man in the world. But I bring him up to say this, that even though he was born for it, he still had to go through. Now, maybe you remember in 1988, maybe you remember Ben Johnson. Now, I was a very, very young lad at that point. I don't remember Ben Johnson. He was the fastest man in the world, and he got busted for steroids. That's not what we're going to talk about today. But back when Ben Johnson was the fastest man in the world, Usain Bolt was but two years old. Now, Usain was not born running. He didn't come out of the womb as the fastest man in the world. He had to go through. There was a season, and we can look at this portion of Scripture and see that the Savior of the world has been born, but he's a baby. It, it hasn't come to fruition yet. He's just a baby. And much in the same way a man like Usain Bolt had to go through, grow, develop, learn, grow, strengthen his muscles to fulfill his destiny as the fastest man in the world, we get to see a picture of Jesus starting on his journey. The amazing thing is that his art, there has already been a path laid out for him even before he was born. We've walked through that over the last few weeks here at our church. Now, the time has come for him to be dedicated in the temple as required in the Torah, even as Samuel was dedicated many years before. As clear as this may seem, sometimes we forget that Jesus was born into a very Jewish family that kept all the Jewish laws blamelessly. Now, in our attempt to understand Jesus, we must not make the mistake of isolating him from his cultural context. As the Apostle Paul observes in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 5, But when the time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law. And in this passage of Scripture, we get a glimpse of three Jewish ceremonies. Circumcision, performed on the eighth day for all male children. You can uh, email uh, Minister Bell or Pastor Lena if you want more information about this circumcision. Number two, purification from childbirth for Mary, 40 days after her son's birth. And lastly, consecration of the firstborn in recognition that the firstborn son belongs to the Lord. Now, our main focus is going to be on three people, Simeon, Anna, and of course, Jesus. We're going to look at their devotion to the Lord, their sensitivity to the Holy Spirit's voice, and Simeon's prophecies. Now, one of the most difficult parts in preparing a sermon about the birth of Jesus and then Jesus' story is putting ourselves in his shoes. If you come to this church for any length of time, you know when we look at a portion of Scripture, Pastor Andrea, as an example, spoke on David and, and us facing our giants. And we always like here to put ourselves in the story for how is this going to apply to me? How can I take this portion of scripture and apply it to my life so that I can be changed and do a great work for the Lord out of what is being said in the text? This is difficult when we get to Jesus because it is so humbling. To put ourselves in the, in the shoes of Jesus feels like a difficult Task because no matter how or where you were born, it was probably not in a manger while a king searched to mur murder you. You probably didn't have the mantle of Messiah on your life, and you probably didn't have people like Simeon and Anna fasting and praying for your arrival because you were going to be the salvation for all people. You can see how it can be challenging to compare ourselves to Jesus. Jesus, born in the dirt with a destiny to die and radically change history by bridging the gap between God and mankind. You see how this could be challenging, but as I prayed about this word, I realized it's just like Jesus to invite us into his story. Just like Jesus to say, you know what, you're not me, but I invite you in. You have a destiny. 
You have a destiny. Because no matter the dirt you come from or the dirt you've walked through or the dirt others have piled on you, he calls you to destiny as you submit and walk with him. Now, if you can't see yourself in Jesus, maybe for a moment you can see yourself in Simeon or Anna. I want to look at the word waiting for a moment. Now, I apologize if I say this word wrong, but you'll get where I'm going anyway. The Greek word for waiting is prok dekomai, which has two senses, to receive favorably or to welcome or to look forward to and wait for. Probably the latter will apply most to Simeon, who has been eagerly awaiting the Messiah. Now the timeline for Simeon and the age of Anna is mentioned for what reason? Simeon has been waiting and he's told he's not going to see death. This is relevant because we are likely told this because like Anna, Simeon is probably not a young man. And if you look throughout the story of Jesus, the age is actually mentioned multiple times, in part, I believe, because they want us to understand the waiting. The waiting for the consolation of Israel. The waiting for the Messiah, that Jesus Christ was the answer to prophecy. And suddenly, we get the answer to the question, who is going to be the Savior? Who is going to be the Messiah? And Simeon and Anna get to see a small baby. You can imagine if someone told you, one day you'll get an apple tree and it will bear apples. And you're looking for this tree. You're looking for the tree and suddenly you see a seed. You don't get to see the full tree yet. You get to see an apple seed. Now we've all eaten eaten apples before. When you break an apple open, you throw the quarter, you get to see the seed. It doesn't bring to mind, one day this will be an apple tree. In the same way, they get to see a small baby. Not just a small baby, but as his parents came in to present the sacrifice, they present two turtle doves or two pigeons. This is a king of modest means. His parents couldn't afford a lamb to sacrifice like some. You imagine if you are in Simeon or Anna's shoes, this isn't the preaching, teaching, healing, resurrecting Jesus. It's a baby. It's a poor baby. Now, we just celebrated his birth. You know him for all he is. You know him for all he is going to be. You've seen the end of the story, but they have waited. They have fasted and prayed. This is the picture they get. All this waiting, and this is what you show me? If I'm Simeon, I'm thinking that there's no way this is it. I've been waiting for the consolation of Israel. God, you must be messing around. Simeon probably thought, I thought the Spirit led me into the temple, but maybe it was some bad pizza. I don't know. Why am I here? There's no way I've been waiting for this. And no, that, that's not how Simeon responds at all. Let me ask you a question. Have you been in a season of waiting? Is it possible that you are waiting on the tree and God has shown you a seed? God has shown you the answer to your waiting. Anna, who has been fasting and praying for the Messiah, would have been calling on heaven for Jesus at the very time that Herod was out trying to kill him. He's been born in a stable and God has had his hand of protection on his life. Sometimes you're praying for things that you don't even know need to happen. This is why we pray, Lord, your will, not mine. Lord, your will, not mine. Because if they knew the end of the story, if they knew he was going to be tortured and murdered on a cross, they would have prayed against it. They would have prayed against it. They would have said, no, God, not that way, not that way, because they wouldn't have known the will of God and what had to be done through the cross. Can we understand that in the waiting, he knows what's coming. He knows what lies ahead. He knows what needs to take place. And that as Minister Owen sang, that his promise still stands. He will be faithful. And as they wait for the consolation of Israel, they are trusting that he is faithful. That he is faithful. Let me ask you a question. Can you enter into prayer in the waiting? Can you pray, Lord, your will and not mine in the waiting? Would you enter into spiritual warfare in the waiting? Because while you're waiting, he's working. 
While you wait, he's at work. Many of us in 2020 have been in seasons of waiting. Do you have the faith that while you wait, he's at work? You see, in the waiting, we feel limited. In the waiting, we feel limited. We like to have our hands of control in every aspect of life. One of the most difficult things in my family is if one of my kids gets sick. If a loved one gets sick, because when that takes place, my hands have to come off. No matter what goes on, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I can't heal the body. My hands have to come off. I have to trust God. You have your hands in it. You have your hands in it. Can you trust him in the waiting? Can you trust him when you are hands off? Because I've realized this, that sometimes God will limit us to grow us. Let me say it again. God will limit us to grow us. Most of us don't think limits produce growth. You think about it. Limited water, limited sun will not grow a seed. It will actually slow the seed's growth. So how can a limit produce growth? When COVID-19 shut down our churches, we didn't foresee that God was setting up a thriving digital ministry. We didn't see that many in the church had taken for granted corporate worship. And look what God can do in a lemon. He can make us grateful for the opportunity to gather together, to be able to lay hands on the sick, for, to be able to do what he's called us to do. But there had to be a limit placed on first. I had my very first car, and I was, uh, you know, doing my very best with my car, with regular scheduled maintenance, changing the tires, doing the oil changes, fixing the brakes. But for the most part, it's my first car. I'm not doing any preventative maintenance. I'm just dealing with the problems as they come. So one day I'm coming down the highway, and my timing belt snaps, and it was due to be changed 1,000 kilometers before, and it snaps, and it destroys my pistons and my valves and my head gasket and just makes a mess in my vehicle. Now, they worked on my vehicle for a couple days, and when I got it back, I was reversing out of the driveway of the garage, and I felt like, even though I had my foot on the brake, that the gas was being pressed. Like the car wanted to just jump out the back of the driveway. So I come back out of the garage, I shoot out in the middle of the road, I almost go in the ditch, put it in drive, and I'm thinking, this, this can't be, something's going on here. I take my foot off the gas and the brake. I'm not touching anything, and the car just accelerates to 80 and drives 80 kilometers an hour on its own. So I bring the vehicle back to the mechanic, and he says he had forgotten to put this small piece on, I think he called it a grommet or something, that impacted the acceleration. Because you see, without this piece, the accelerator didn't have a limit. It would just shoot its way up to 80 kilometers an hour without even touching the gas. But to drive and move forward effectively, I want my vehicle to have a limit. I don't want the gas to be fully pressed in every moment. I almost threw myself in a ditch. I could have been harmed very badly without that limit. But I want the ones who created the vehicle to, to decide the limit. I want the ones who put the vehicle together to decide that limit. I want the creator to determine the limit. Much in the same way as I go through life, I want the creator of my soul to determine the limits that are on me. Because what will happen is I want the gas to go to 80 sometimes instantly and he knows that is only going to harm me. That is only going to hurt me. So God, I don't want it a minute too early. I don't want it a minute too late. I want it directly on time. So whatever limit you need to put on me in this season, I want that limit. I want that limit because I know you will limit me to grow me, because maybe he has you waiting for a reason. Maybe he has you waiting for a season. You need to determine this. Am I waiting or am I sitting? Am I waiting or am I sitting? You see, when they told me that I, my car needed two days, they didn't ask me, do you want to stay? We're going to have our, your vehicle for two days. They didn't say, do you want to stay and wait for the car? Do you want to spend the night? No, they realized this man probably has stuff to do over the next 48 hours. So in your waiting, what are you doing? One of my favorite Pastor Lennett quotes is, your downtime 
is prep time for prime time. Your downtime is prep time for prime time. So in your waiting, as you are waiting on God, saying, God, I need an answer from you. You're like Simeon. You're waiting for the consolation of Israel. You're waiting. What are you doing in the waiting? Here's what's interesting. We can look at Anna because she knew what to do in the waiting. She got married and had a husband for seven years. After his death, it says she fasted and prayed till she was 84. Now, a typical Jewish marriage is usually between 14 and 20. So likely, she was fasting and praying for at least 55 years. Anna said, my husband is dead. I guess that gives me more time to fast and to pray because she knew this. James 5.16 says, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. God honors Anna, and before her death, she gets to see the answer to 55 years of prayer. She gets to see from dirt to destiny. That she says, you know what? My husband has died. I still got work to do. And we need people that will go into warfare, that will go into spiritual warfare. I know we can get an attitude Pastor, everything gets pointed back to prayer. If you listened to Pastor Leonard's sermon last week, you probably heard the same thing. Prayer, 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 prayer. Always pointing us back to prayer. I, I know that, and I actually would agree with you. The issue is that I believe we have the solution in prayer and that we don't choose to walk in it, and we need examples like Anna that will show us that we need people that will fight for the kingdom by going but we also need people that will do war in the heavenlies through prayer. People that know we fight not flesh and blood, but principalities of the dark because the prayers of the righteous will avail much. To walk in your destiny is to walk in or by the Spirit. Let's look at Simeon for a minute. Luke chapter 2 verse 27 says, So he came by the Spirit into the temple. Now, different translations would call that moved or led by the Spirit. In any case, the Spirit has brought Simeon into the temple for this occasion. Sometimes we don't find ourselves where we ought to be because we're led by other things. Let me say that again. Sometimes we don't find ourselves where we ought to be because we are led by other things. But Simeon is led by the Spirit. Maybe you've heard the saying before, right place, right time. Right place, right time. Oh, I got the, he got the job because he was in the right place at the right time. Happened to, to win that raffle in the grocery store. He was in the right place at the right time. Met my wife. Right place, right time. There's only one way to be in the right place at the right time. This might sound a little old school for a minute, but if you find yourselves on your knees in prayer before God on a regular basis and you ask him to have you in the right place at the right time, he will take care of the rest. Your net work, your net worth can't place you places that the one who spins the earth can. Your net work or your net worth won't place you places that the one who spins the earth can. You don't need a guy who knows a guy because you know the guy. So you can trust like Simeon trusted that I'm being moved, I'm being led, I'm walking by the Spirit so I know this is where I need to be now. So Simeon, whose story relates closely to Anna, has been in a waiting period and is led into the temple. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25 says, If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. To walk by the Spirit and to be moved by the Spirit is a willingness to invite His presence into your life. Don't miss that word, life. Simeon didn't get to set the timer on the oven and say, Okay, God, I'm waiting for the consolation of Israel. I'm going to set the timer, and when it beeps, I'll know that he's ready. Let me know when he's ready. Let me know when the Messiah has arrived. No, he is daily, moment by moment, letting God guide his life. He doesn't know when it's taking place. He doesn't know what's happening next. But moment by moment, he's letting God guide his life. To go from dirt to destiny means giving your days to him, giving your decisions to him, giving your life to him. So in the waiting, can you say, Lord, you are welcome here? Yeah, our, our, our 
Our series is called Christmas Presents. I call this post-Christmas presents because Christmas has just taken place a couple days ago. But as we move out of Christmas into a new season in 2021, can we say, Lord, you're welcome. Lord, you're invited. Lord, I want your hand in my life. In my old church, we used to say, welcome Holy Spirit. And we had some people that would get an attitude and say, what are you, every service we welcome in Holy Spirit. You know he's already here, right? Yes. We know God is here in his omnipresence. We're well aware of that. When I say, welcome Holy Spirit, what I'm actually telling him is this. God, you are welcome here. You're welcome in my heart. You're welcome to have your will and your way in me. So when I say welcome, I know you're already present. I know you're already willing. And I'm telling you, I'm willing. Because he's not going to overtake a heart that is unwilling. But if you say, welcome Holy Spirit, I'm ready, I'm willing, he will come. There's a major difference between being welcomed and tolerated. Maybe you've experienced that in different friend groups you've been with. Maybe you've experienced that in workplaces you've been in. To be welcomed and tolerated are two different things. He doesn't want to be tolerated. He wants a willing heart that says, God, do what you want to do. Lead me, guide me, direct me. I'm willing. Now, part of Simeon's destiny is to prophesy something very crucial. He says this. He says, Lord, this is in verse 29, now you are letting your, your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Then he says to Mary in verse 34, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken again against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. He speaks that this revelation will be for all people, including the Gentiles. And he says something that I imagine would brought, have brought a chill to his mother. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. We celebrate his birth. His parents are likely still celebrating his birth at this moment. But we, get, we know because we know the end of the story that the reason a sword would pierce Mary's soul is because her son's side would be pierced with a sword. Nails were going to go through his hands. That he was going to die for each and every one of us and be the redemption for mankind. Although he would be the perfect man, although he would speak only truth, grace, love, and hope, he would be tortured and murdered on a tree. And when you think about Mary for a moment, you think as a parent, this is the journey that my son is going to be on. Even though he would be perfect in every way, he would be tortured and murdered on a tree for you and for me. He was born in dirt and his destiny would have him seated on the throne his side was pierced, and he bled and died so that your destiny would not be an eternal hell, but an eternity of everlasting glory beyond measure, beyond measure in heaven. So as we start to slowly move to a close, step back for a moment and look at the landscape of what was 2020. If you'll recall, my, my last sermon was Radical Return. Radical Return. How are we living in light of Christ's return? As I look over the landscape of 2020, I ask God, Lord, what am I destined for in 2021? Yes, of course, I'm thinking in my head, <coughs> excuse me, about a summer with less COVID and a better vacation. I'm thinking about being able to gather together in church without having to book a seat and be spaced out from my friends. God, in the waiting, though, as I wait for the change, <coughs> What do you have for me? What do you have for me in the waiting? You see, 2020 is symbolic. When January 1st comes, things won't magically change. January 1st won't equal magical change. It's symbolic. So God, as I move into a new year, what would you have 
me change in the waiting? Am I sitting? Or am I looking at you and saying, God, I can look at the landscape of 2020 and see what you've done. I know your hand is in 2021 as I walk into it. Let me be patient in the waiting for whatever is to come next. And you leave that change to God. And you say, God, I will trust you. On Father's Day, I stood before our church and I said, I want to lose 25 pounds before September. Now, it, it took a few extra months, but we did get there. The day after Father's Day, the weight didn't magically fall off because I said I want to lose 25 pounds. The weight followed the work. The weight followed the work because lipping it and living it are two different things. To say something with our mouth and to actually walk it out are two different things. I had to start stacking things together that would help me. I had to get accountability partners that would hold me accountable for what are you doing? Are you exercising? Are you eating properly? I started tracking the foods that I was eating. You see, as we go into a new year, the goals you have, the things that have been spoken on your life, the destiny that you say, I know God has destined me for greatness, it's going to follow the work. It's going to follow how faithful you will be to what God has spoken to you. It won't magically happen. 2021 won't suddenly flip a switch and, oh, it's magic and everything just falls into place. It will follow the work because he who is faithful, he who has called you, he who has put a plan in your life will be faithful as you say, God, I am ready and willing. I will do the actions necessary to get where I need to go. God, the warfare that sits in front of me in 2021... Can I trust that I can fight it with prayer and fasting? Can I be like Anna that knows that, yes, it's a new year, but it's a new battle? It's a new year. There will be a new battle to fight in 2021. That the God that destined you for greatness will honor your work in the waiting. The God that destined you for greatness will honor your work in the waiting. Simeon and Anna worked in the waiting. Jesus destined for the cross continued to work in the waiting. Maybe you feel like if you could, you would erase this year. Maybe it hasn't just been COVID for you. Maybe it's been many other things. Sometimes it's hard to see the destiny through the dirt. Can you give it to Jesus? Can you say, God, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see what lies ahead. I don't, I've got dirt in my eyes. I can't even see what lies ahead right now. Can you give it to Jesus? My wife and I, uh, if we were being honest and transparent right now, we would say, you know what? We've got battles on our horizon. Maybe we can't see the answer on the other side. But I, I, had, a, I had a little moment with Jesus the other day where I was asking him to remove something in our season. And he spoke very clearly to me. He just said, you sure are praying a lot more when this is going on. You sure are taking a lot more time to come before me when this is going on. You sure are fasting a lot more when this battle is going on. Can you come before God and say, God, I'm not going to wait for the battle. I'm not going to wait for 2021 and what it's going to throw at me. I want to come in prepared. Like Anna, I'm going to say, I don't know when it's coming. I don't know when the Messiah is going to come. I might have to fast and pray for 55 years. That's a very long time. But I can trust him. I can trust him and I will work in the waiting and he will guide you and carry you. This baby, now crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords, in Revelation chapter 5, they ask, who is worthy to open the scrolls? And there's only one. The lion and the lamb, he is worthy to open the scrolls. And yet, he cares about you and he cares about me. He's worthy and yet he will reach down into our mess in this Christmas season and bless us with his presence. I invite you as we close to invite him into 2021. I, I, I would just encourage you as we wrap up this morning, would you come back to him and say, God, I've got plans. I have things that I want to take, see take place. But I know your plans are better. I know that what you have in store is better. If I'm going to go to, from dirt to destiny, if I'm going to walk in my destiny with him, I'm going to have to be led by the Spirit, and I'm going to have to work in the waiting. So I encourage you, work 
in the waiting and walk to your destiny. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every person that's within the sound of my voice, God. They have goals, they have dreams, they have vision. God, I ask that those goals, dreams, and visions would go through your heart. Lord, that you would lead, guide, and direct. God, that we'd be a people that would be willing to say, like Simeon, like Anna, I don't know when it's coming. I don't know when my destiny is going to lie before me, but I will work in the waiting. I will work in the waiting, and I will trust you, God. In, the, in these moments, I will fast and pray. I will do whatever is necessary to fulfill my destiny with Jesus. For the ones right now who say, I've got dirt in my eyes. People have kicked me when I was down. They've thrown the dirt in my face. I can't see my destiny with all this dirt and mess in my face. God, I ask that you would go to them right now. You are the humble king. You wipe the dirt from our eyes. You stand us up. You sit us on a rock. And you are faithful to show us our destiny when we can't see it. So, Lord, go with us now. Be with us. We won't go back. We cannot go back. We want to go with you. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I've been changed. He Before your presence came and changed me.